it was a great Canadian theatre story. The it time is a good that story. the actor said, "Okay, I'll direct the scene." Well, do Mr. you have a better idea? I think he said, "Peter, you said, well, do you have any ideas?" And I said, "Yeah, actually, I do." But you see, that's part of the problem too. Sometimes with directors, when you come out of a collective creation process where you're all trying to solve the problems in the room, the authority of the director is not always like. So to go back a bit, Miles had also done the farm show. Miles had done Pass Mirai. You done had done collective things. He had written and improvised in those shows. And so, and, and my first show was a collective creation, this foreign land. And you're all trying to solve problems. So if you have an idea, you, you throw it into the pot. But sometimes in rehearsal halls, your ideas really, you know, are not always welcome. Or, or some directors will take it as an affront to their authority because they have to have the final word and say the word. And that's, that's, that's difficult. Let's talk about directors and who they were, but also yeah. your relationship with them and also how you as a leading actress, how you dance with different directors. Mm -hmm. um, so we came out of, of the tradition, the Peter Muse of the... Jews dues of the of the expat Brits coming over and and yep. some very good and some, yeah, some not wonderful. very good at all and you say you were aware you didn't want to give up your Canadianness of your mm -hmm. R mm -hmm. as it were yeah so very interesting because the R you know even when I was doing Tartuffe in 1983 and the cast was it was my first year on the main stage I'd come from the Shakespeare three company and then come up to do uh, some roles on the festival, and uh, I was playing Marianne, the ingenue in Tartuffe. My father was Douglas Campbell. Uh, my lover was Andrew Gillies. Sean Austin Olson was my brother. Amelia Hall was Madame Pernelle. Uh Nikki Pennell was Cléante. Uh, uh, Roberta was Elmire. Um, and I was brought in at one point to work on my accent. I said, what accent? Well, so you're part of the family. I said, but we are doing a French play translated by an American, Richard Wilbur, on a Canadian stage. And you want me to do a British accent? And I said, which British accent do you want me to do? And Brian Bedford was Tartuffe. I said, do you want me to do Brian's or Douglas's? Or, and Amelia's wasn't British. It was just very well-spoken Canadian. Like Who's old the director CBC. Of the and it was John Hirsch. It was Hirsch, okay. You know. And Douglas said, Don't worry, I'll just make mine more Canadian. You know. So he sort of let me off the hook on the first day. But then I was called in later for a voice tutorial. And I went, No. So That was pretty um, gutsy of you, Shauna, your first time on the big stage, and John Hirsch to say, Excuse me, I have my limits of what I want to do as a creator. Yeah. Well, John Hirsch, you know, he's, he's responsible for part of that because he said, you know, at one point years later when we did Lear, or the next year, he said, you, you, I want you. What would you do in this situation? I said, oh, me. You want? So uh, he did encourage that kind of um, self-thinking, although, you know, he was, you know. Let's talk about him because he's a huge part, John Hirsch was yeah. a large part of our growing up of the Stratford Festival, mm -hmm. both on the positive side of the ledger and on the destructive yeah. side of the ledger. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. important, I think, that we talk it through. Yes, he You did Tartuffe with I him? I did you Tartuffe. Did I was in As You Like It. I understudied Roberta Maxwell and went on for her a couple of times in As You Like It. And uh, I did King Lear with him. And then he remounted Twelfth Night for the tour. And then I did Odd Jobs with him, which was a um, Frank Moore play at um, the Berkeley Space, Canadian stage. It was his last show in Canada. So uh, I, I didn't do that many plays with him, but he was the head of the theater when I came here. Uh, and how do you dance with the head of the theater who's then the director? Do you obviously don't fall into the line. You have your, your limits, but yeah. how do you? Well, you, I think you have to forget that they're the head of the theater while you're the acting with them because you're trying to... <sighs> It's always a dance because it's always compromised. Theatre is a collaborative art. Even when you're doing a one-person show, 
uh, if it's not your words, you're working with the playwright or the sound designer or the lighting designer. They're all working together. So it's a collaboration and with the director. So you're trying to find your meeting place. Hopefully, you meet mostly in the same place. Um, what the director wants and what y you can offer them. And, uh, and how do you find that balance between what they want and what you can offer and what's I allowed? I think you can find ways to do it. I think basically, as John Hurst said, you know, he, Tartuffe one day, I remember, he said, Sean, you, it's very emotional. You have to be crying. Your heart is, on, you know, th this is the man you don't want to marry. You're talking to your father, you know. You've got to, it's passionate, you know, crying, you know, whatever. So the next day I came in, tears everywhere. He stopped me halfway through. The words, the words, I can't hear the words, right? He wanted the immediate product. I went into him. Then we were doing Lear, and he gave me two different notes the one day. I went into his office. I said, John, John, yesterday you said this, today you said this. Which is it? He said, you're the actor. Just the, 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 make it better, act better, you know, basically is what he was saying. So he would try, but ultimately, if you brought it to the table and he liked it, he was fine. So the operative phrase in that anecdote was you went into his office. There are two other men, one of which you're married to and the other one sitting here, who got the wreckage of Hirsch. Yeah. And neither of us, I don't believe either of us, went into his office and said, what do you want? Both no. Miles had wreckage, because I lived with him that year. He yes, played Caliban and the Tempest. Yeah. And he was what's called Hirsch, and he didn't come out of his room for three days, because he didn't know who he was or which yeah. way was up. Oh, he was cruel. John was cruel. John, John and, and he was later in therapy about it, because he knew. He knew something was wrong the way he was treating people. Uh, and he didn't understand. He really didn't understand. I remember talking to John. I said, "We said, what? Do I, Miles was so fantastic in the in the in the Tempest. What was wrong?" I said, "John, you threw a cardboard box at his head. Like, hello." <laughs> you know, he did not really. He talked such extraordinary uh, tales about life and you know, uh, the world. His first day speeches. His first day speech for As You Like It. I'll never forget it. He went, oh, "This is why we do the theater." So he was extraordinarily intelligent. He was, he had a great, you know, idea for what he wanted to see. He just didn't know how always to get people to realize that vision, talking to an actor. He didn't understand the process, as many directors who have never acted don't. That you have to be patient for a while, they'll get there eventually. This, they need to do this right now because you've asked them to do this, let, give them a day. You know, uh, they can't process all those notes right now. Trust them, especially if you cast them, you know. Um, and I think uh, John, he would just say what he felt. He didn't, he didn't sense it. What is this? You know, he said to a little kid, what is this? In The Tempest, he went down the line and said, what is this Mickey Mouse acting you're doing? The kid was eight or something, right? He had no... Uh, a, a censor, yeah. because it was about the work. But the work is the people. When you're in the theater, the work is the people. And part of the whole thing is being able to talk to actors and get what you want out of them, to enable them, not to paralyze them. And Hirsch had a tendency to paralyze his actors because everybody wanted so desperately to please him. And it was like you were never going to please him.